Are you guys able to see the presentation? Yeah, yeah, we can. So I think let me give a quick intro of Vivek, but I think by now, folks, you guys are already aware. So Vivek uh, is right now working in at Bay Area. So he is currently associated with Micron USA. And uh, previously he worked in uh, SanDisk India, Qualcomm Logic, Hyderabad. And eventually he relocated to Samsung Korea. And from there he went ahead and did his uh, STEM program from MIT. And then uh, eventually he joined Micron as a analog designer in high voltage uh, analog design space. So today the way we are going to uh, basically divide the presentation is first we'll uh, get some overview what kind of trends what is going on high voltage uh, circuit designs especially the design uh, trends in uh, flash memory industry and towards then uh, Vivek will also share his journey from India to uh, Samsung Korea to MIT and then eventually in USA and if you guys have any career specific question so with that I think Vivek uh, let's start the presentation and folks, I think okay. you, you have to stop annotation. I see somebody already. Uh, maybe we, uh, can we just unshare and share? Because sometimes only folks are annotated. Okay. Let me share. Yeah, just unshare and share. It should go. So don't <laughs> folks on the screen. Uh, then you will not be able to record it properly. Please okay. go. Uh, yeah, is my audio clear? Yeah, it's clear. I just it's clear. Found on my yeah, yeah, it's clear. It's clear. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vivek, and uh, uh, thanks, uh, Dritiman, for the introduction. So I'm presently working as a project lead in Micron in non-volatile uh, design engineering. So today I'll give you basic overview of the memory industries and the opportunities in the memory industry. I'll walk you through uh, the trends in the memory industry and uh, what kind of job opportunities are there and how big is this memory industry and how is the overall market. And finally, I'll walk you through some of the technical aspects uh, of the de design. And also a uh, few, uh, I think I've quickly added a few interview questions also in the end. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first of all, uh, uh, I'll walk you through over the memories at a glance. As you can see. One request, uh, uh -huh. can you uh, slide mode? Oh, okay, yes. Thanks. Okay, so so this is uh, a, a picture I just uh, grabbed from the internet, um, which gives a very good uh, overview of uh, kinds of memories uh, we have nowadays. Basically, uh, the memories are divided as most of you might be knowing into non-volatile or, or volatile memories. Uh, SRAM and DRAM come under non-volatile uh, memories and uh, NAND and uh, hard disk are non-volatile memories, which means that uh, the memory is stored even if there is no power. So uh, mostly non-volatile uh, memories are used in data storage space, where you need uh, huge huge memories uh, to store the data. Um, and also, like uh, they they are pretty uh, cheap uh, in the. Uh, so uh, most of the design effort is to make them more and more and more cheaper because um, they have to store lar large amounts of data and the cost is uh, a primary factor in the design and uh, in terms of uh, um, in terms of speed yeah the nand and hard disk are uh, much slower when compared to dram or sram and we have this uh, middle yellow region which is called storage class memory which is broadly defined into storage class memory by IBM so uh, here uh, it's as you can uh, guess it is a kind of a hybrid between uh, volatile and non-volatile memories meaning that uh, 
it is almost as fast as non -volat uh, volatile memory but uh, also it is a non, non volatile memory that means it can store the uh, bits without power supply but it is also faster so a lot of uh, research going on in this in this area also nowadays but still uh, uh, there need to be uh, cost advantage for mass ad adoption so uh, right now uh, cost wise nand is the best uh, best non volatile memory uh, as you know that uh, hard disk sto storage has become obsolete now uh, most of the um, most of the at least industry enterprise uh, are moving towards uh, nand storage uh, all the nowadays all the data centers are moving from hard disk to nand uh, so huge opportunity for the NAND flash memory here. Uh, since I work in the NAND flash memory, we'll be like mostly concentrating on the NAND flash for today's uh, discussion. So just uh, before, uh, I just wanted to give a brief overview of the players in this uh, industry. Um, uh, so this will be useful, like if you want to um, uh, try your careers and uh, the companies mentioned here. So I've also mentioned, uh, this is in terms of market share. The slide is a little bit old. Um, it's like based on some 2018 forecast. It's pretty much more or same, the same, uh, similar even today. Uh, so the major players are Samsung, Toshiba, Western Digital, SanDisk, SK Hynix, Micron, Intel and others in the NAND space. Uh, DRAM space, it's much more, uh, I mean, uh, lesser uh, lesser players in this field, only like uh, three big players and very small other uh, others play, other players having very small uh, presence. So Samsung is obviously is the, the leading uh, company in both the memories with almost like 30 to 40 percent uh, market share. Uh, they have their presence in India. They have recently opened their analog team. Um, and IO teams, they just started their work uh, in non in uh, NAND flash. Hey, um, um, really, yes. one, one quick question, uh, myself yes. Srikant. So I think uh, people will be maybe in while well, you're just talking about it, right? Actually, can you just uh, give a light on um, other functionals also in this domain, right? Not just analog or IO. Maybe the validation mm -hmm. of the physical data space in this. I mean, the team presence in in India. In those domains also if you if you have the data oh yeah okay Th thanks Sri uh, Srikant uh, for uh, reminding me yeah so as I see like uh, they have a uh, Samsung uh, outside uh, NAND flash they have other logic teams also uh, which do digital design as well um, uh, when I meant analog team here it is uh, just for NAND, NAND flash they started NAND flash but for DRAM and other uh, things I think uh, they have a logic team, uh, as I understand. Um, so SK Hynix has no presence. Micron has just started their logic design and verification uh, in Hyderabad. Um, this is for NAND specific again. I think uh, for DRAM and all, they also have um, logic and other teams. Um, and uh, coming to Western Digital, it's the well-established player uh, started very early uh, back when it was SanDisk. Uh, so they have a presence of all their functional teams, including analog layout, uh, um, a digital verification, logic design, integration. Uh, in fact, uh, the analog work done uh, in Western Digital is uh, that, that's the only team that's doing analog work in Western Digital. Nowhere else in the uh, in other uh, uh, business centers. Uh, Toshiba and Intel are also some uh, small player. Uh, to Toshiba of course is big and uh, Intel also has some memory division. Uh, I don't know if it's there in India or not, but uh, Intel also works on memories, especially they're uh, working on 3D storage class memory as I have uh, told before. Yeah, this, so this is uh, pretty much about the uh, the players, uh, the companies which uh, work in uh, the memory. Memory, uh, of course, nowadays uh, some Chinese companies are also venturing into memory, NAND flash, and DRAM uh, design. Uh, 
um, so hopefully I I'm probably I don't know uh, how how much impact they can have <clears throat> so uh, I was talking about uh, this is like um, uh, the mem the the memory revenues uh, over a period of uh, the past 10 years uh, I'm just uh, showing this slide to let you know how um, how important the memory has become in the recent uh, days. So if you look at the, these curves, uh, basically this is the forecasts uh, that were done in 2013. They thought a linear growth for memory. Uh, but what you see is uh, uh, after 2000, around 2016 or so, there is an exponential growth in the NAND flash memory. Uh, the revenues have, have already grown exponentially and uh, I don't have the most latest slide but this exponential growth is actually continuing uh, as of today. So the reason being the, the explosion happened because of new technologies we are uh, seeing today like AI, IoT or cloud computing. The Most of the data centers they are moving towards uh, high performance memory which means uh, um, they need faster memory and uh, uh, high density memories um, to to cater to the enablers of uh, of this uh, new memory. So, so this era of uh, big data has actually um, uh, increased the demand for memory exponentially, and uh, so that's why uh, this is an exciting time to be in the memory industry, basically. Um, so, as I said, like in 2018, uh, the actual flash memory revenues are 60% more than predicted for forecast. So, someone said data is new oil. Um, China spends more, more uh, money in importing memories than they spend money on importing oil. So, that's why they have uh, started uh, developing their own uh, memory. The Chinese government is funding lot of memory companies nowadays. Um, but again, um, uh, like uh, technology is what is important. So if you're behind in the technology curve, uh, it's very difficult to be competitive in this space. So the companies which have first more advantage, they are always uh, leading as of now. Uh, so yeah, Vivek, so just wanted to- uh -huh. Vivek, just wanted to- uh, Hey guys, don't play on the screen. Can you just for the on last time, can you unshare and share? Guys, it's a okay. thing. I don't uh, know. Somebody is trying to make me take some notes. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's do, let's stop. Share Don't again. play on the screen, guys. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, let's get back. Yeah, it's back, it's back. Yeah. Just uh, wanted to give uh, a brief uh, introduction about what uh, what does NAND flash memory means. What is NAND in there? It's very simple actually. Uh, remember a CMOS logic NAND gate, right? We have some uh, NMOS transistors in series connected like a string. So that's where the the name name is derived from. So in NAND flash memories, uh, we have a string of cells connected back to in series kind of fashion. Um, so, uh, so that, that, that's where the name comes from NAND and uh, I can see transistors are not the normal transistors uh, we have, they are the floating gate transistors, which means there are, there are two gates, one is a control gate, one is a floating gate and uh, uh, to, to program this cell, if we put a uh, high voltage on the control gate, then some electrons will tunnel through and uh, get stored in the floating gate and the VT of this device gets uh, altered. Uh, so that's how you basically store the data. So if in, in simple terms, if I want to say like if it's if a cell is programmed, uh, then it, if, if you, you are uh, giving a lesser voltage, um, uh, that means its VT is little elevated. So when you're giving a lesser voltage, the current will not pass through this. So that will be read as a zero. And if the, if the cell is erased, that will be read as a one. 
so there is that's how, that's how you you are trying to like store uh, data um, of course there are multi level uh, cells which means that the vt can be actually uh, modulated um, by uh, into into different vts that's how one cell can actually store more more bits of course these technicalities uh, we are not discussing right now uh, probably some other session if uh, if uh, if at all it happens so <clears throat> uh, i'll push that discussion to some other time uh, so basically um, yeah you as you can see the where they are used uh, they are ubiqu ubiquitous nowadays um, in mobiles we have mem flash memories as well as drams and uh, we have micro sds uh, ssds are the ma major revenue generators for all the memory players nowadays um, and uh, they are being deployed in uh, data centers uh, uh, of course uh, uh, so enterprises uh, i mean the, the other companies which have data centers they are the big customers and that's how memory uh, memory companies are uh, very important they're at the heart of all these uh, uh, big data applications <clears throat> so a lot of research going on to reduce the cost uh, and to improve the performance uh, improve the speed basically as you as i told you in the first pyramid where uh, the nand flash memories are slower so constant innovation is going on in these uh, areas to reduce the cost uh, shrink the die size and uh, increase the speed of memory and NAND flash memory. So yeah, it's uh, more uh, definitely it has uh, advantage over the hard disk drives, which are almost obsolete nowadays. Yeah. So I just wanted to show how a NAND flash memory die looks like. Um, as you can see here to the left, uh, uh, first uh, let's look at the right, the, these strings, um, these are the memory strings I've been talking about, and there are a lot of strings. Um, uh, and uh, this is called this is what we call an array. Uh, this is where all the memory is. Uh, each each transistor floating gate uh, cell here is storing a bit or more, uh, two bits or three bits of memory. <clears throat> and uh, coming to the left, uh, this is the actual die. So if you see <coughs> the array part is divided into two planes. And we have page buffers, means these are the sense amps, which actually sense the stored uh, uh, stored data, uh, whether it's a zero or one, and uh, that data is latched here, and then sent to the IOs, uh, which are sitting at the, at the bottom here. These are the IO pads in a, <coughs> in a memory chip. And uh, we have these peripheral circuits. This is where our analog portion comes into the picture. So the analog portion, basically we, we try to generate the analog voltages on the, on the different analog voltages required uh, for this correct operation. Um, and uh, so we have uh, some uh, IO, IO circuits and uh, high speed circuits here. And uh, yeah, so, so basically this is a 2D memory. So a lot of research uh, is going on uh, to try, we are trying to reduce the die, die size, constantly trying to reduce the die size. And uh, so the memories have evolved. Um, NAND flash memories have actually evolved into more complex uh, uh, structures nowadays. Uh, I guess in 2012, uh, Samsung announced uh, uh, 3D, NAND flash memories. Uh, they call it a VNAND, vertical NAND, because uh, as we reach the scaling limits uh, in the two-dimensional space, um, because they want to constantly shrink the cell size so that um, they can make more denser and denser memories, like uh, fit more memory into a given area. But that is 2, 2D NAND. Um, but as the cell size was shrinking, uh, there were actually uh, the electrons that are uh, trapped in the floating gate were uh, were becoming lesser and lesser 
and it was giving uh, reliability issues and uh, a lot of issues uh, so there there are obviously physical limits in shrinking um, in shrinking so people have uh, thought innovatively and they started growing the memories in the vertical direction where there are stacks of uh, cells one over the other uh, so this this gives us uh, more density um, uh, so we can fit more memory in a given area um, uh, so if you see um, basically what they do is they stack these layers and they drill holes into this one and so uh, an intersection between uh, one horizontal layer and uh, and, uh, and a vertical pillar is a cell now uh, so it's uh, a bit uh, difficult to visualize but uh, yeah so this is how it's being done and uh, also uh, with the the very very portion i was talking about uh, this is no longer uh, sticking out now they push this under the uh, under the array uh, they call that uh, circuits under array uh, micron is the pioneer in that uh, technology so they started uh, uh, pushing these uh, uh, portion under the array um so that will give a more cost advantage and more area advantage so uh, i just kept these pictures uh, to give you a perspective of a planar versus 3d so every time uh, you, you move uh, from one technology to other there is a 30 percent more uh, cost saving so here 128 gb uh, gigabit die uh, uh and uh, around uh, around the same area uh, if you move to a 3d uh, 32 tire the tires are these uh, um, horizontal uh, um, plates here um so if you move to a 32 tire 3d you can actually fit more memory in the around the same space and uh, if you go for a 64 tire 3d uh, you can actually uh, uh, compare this with the 128 gigabyte here uh, it's much smaller, right? So that's how you do the scaling uh, nowadays. And uh, yeah, are... sorry to interrupt you. Actually, yeah. a small yeah. question over here. Like uh -huh. uh, we are moving from two D to three D because of uh, the physical uh, limitations or restrictions we face while fabrication because we are having loading gate, and mm -hmm. that may provide uh, uh, some yeah. unnecessary cha charges like you know, trap charges and something and because of physical mm -hmm. limitations we are moving to 3d so my question mm -hmm. is like what is the limitation we get on this stacking like we are going for 64 okay. tire why not 256 yeah. 512 and so on like okay what limitation so, yeah. is on stacking very good question very good question Meno, who's uh who, who has asked this question can they introduce yeah them? yeah the nikhil from iit bhu okay okay so uh hi nikhil yeah good question uh, so basically, uh, there are some challenges in scaling in the Z direction also. Um, so right now the industry is at around say 100 plus layers. I can't really the uh, I can't tell the number. Um, but uh, again, there are some mechanical stress effects. Uh, also, you don't want to like uh, if you are uh, stacking more and more uh, layers. Um, the fabrication uh, of, of this drilling uh, these holes is also an issue. Um, uh, for example, yeah, the holes need to become bigger and bigger for uh, uh, to be to be able to be drilled into uh, to more number of layers. Um, so that that will again make the uh, the overall memory less competitive, basically. So. Um, there are some techniques uh, uh, which industry follows. Uh, probably, I cannot, uh, I cannot tell them for, uh, because of the. Yeah, uh, like I can understand that. But my question yeah. is like uh, the die mm -hmm. of the hole will. In I mean, the die of that particular hole will increase, or the number of holes will increase. Like my, my understanding from your explanation is like the number mm -hmm. of holes for a uh, horizontal plate will increase, and that will uh, disturb the physical stress of that. Uh, no, no, no. As you go, as the depth increases, uh, the hole size will increase. So effectively, the number of holes uh, become, uh, they reduce. Okay, so okay. because of the mechanical concerns, we'll have to increase the hole size. 
so basically there is a limit to to actually stacking the layers um but uh, we do overcome that kind of uh, issues uh, um, by some techniques uh, which i can't really uh, re uh, reveal now, reveal um, it's kind of uh, highly confidential so but uh, you understand yes there are techniques and people are working on uh, trying to overcome the challenges here there are challenges definitely um yeah there is a limit uh, uh so one yeah. more question here like uh, do we have anything so that we could simulate and understand its function and exactly i mean is there any uh, tools available or techniques available right now yeah so yeah. probably at the industry level if you look at the core uh, design right uh, there's not much in the books it's mostly uh being done at the industry level so all these all these uh, physical uh, cells are modeled uh with their rcs and uh, the electrical character there is a separate team working on modeling this array uh, it's called a technology development team uh so those models will be provided to us and uh, yeah of course the folks in uh, technology development they'll be constantly working trying to uh model this uh, array as closely as possible so the tools uh, yeah so, so they they'll have their proprietary tools for that so it's not like freely available in the in the um, market or something like that it's not uh, okay. okay it's not in the book seat at least there are very very few books so any career here uh, you'll have to gain by experience um uh when if you want to work in the core portion of the memory yeah uh, i'll 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 go i'll tell you when uh, i have a few slides about what what are the functional teams and i'll go over them yeah so yeah so these are the functional groups in the uh in the nand flash design uh this is again specific to nand flash uh, we have a, a core design team um analog design team io design and time enclosure uh, logic design circuit validation circuit verification layout and integration so the core folks uh, mostly work on program arrays and read um, operations in the uh, in the core mm. and uh, the analog designers they work on the uh, peripheral circuits that uh, need to generate the required voltages and uh, uh, some other uh, custom logic custom design blocks and uh, io design of course uh, uh, io design and time enclosures they work on bringing out the data to the outer world that is the data that is being read uh, from the array that uh, we need to transfer the data right so i would design uh, work on them and uh, logic design um, they they design the algorithms uh, they try to improve uh, the speed of the program read or erase algorithms uh, circuit validation they verify uh, whether all the algos are running uh, as expected uh, validation and logic verification of course they do um validate the algorithms uh, digital uh, verification uh, of course layout you guys know uh, they draw the circuits uh, what are designed and integration team is like uh, they integrate all these portions and then uh, uh, put it in on the final die uh, they plan the area and uh, performance uh, specs they work uh, they work on all that uh so these are the functional groups uh, apart from this uh, nand flash design we have a controller also which is uh, which interacts with the nand so the on the controller side you have again the logic uh, analog all these uh, uh, all these groups as well and we have uh, ssd group uh, ssd firmware um, uh, ssd groups basically uh, mostly firmware where they uh, they have this software Uh, specific for ssds and uh, yeah there are uh, it's uh, because nowadays most of the memory is mostly uh, ssd is the most revenue generating uh, so there we are seeing lot of uh, um uh, growth in the for uh, ssd firmware also 
that's also a nice career option um um so yeah so coming back uh, uh, we have these functional groups and uh, uh, let me uh, zoom in a little boom little bit more on the uh, analog design where i lead uh, analog related uh, um, projects um, for the overall product uh, so in the coming to the analog design these are the blocks uh, uh, we typically work on it's pretty much everything we have uh, something called charge pumps this is not the uh, the regular charge pump that you use in the pll but it's a high voltage dc dc converter I'll, i have a slide on this one and uh, we have uh, uh, regular ldos uh, and band gaps and references we have oscillators we have a temperature sensor temperature sensing is also one of the a very important uh, uh, activity in the in the um, nand flash operation um, because the cell vt shifts based on the temperature and we'll have to track that and uh, we have power detectors we have adcs and dacs um, in the analog portion and we have other some custom circuits which is specific to memories like sense amps uh, some specific level shifters because there are many power domains involved uh, apart from the regular vdd uh, we have a 20 volt supply needed some uh, to erase or program so the we we need to shift from one one uh, power domain to the other so we use level shifters uh, many custom level shifters um, a little more complex than the simple ones um, so simple sense amplifiers obviously are uh, custom circuits and very highly confidential uh, each company has their own uh, because uh, the read performance uh, depends on the sense amplifier design um yeah so this is uh, this is pretty much uh, an overview of analog circuits uh, we use uh, in the memory industry um let me go ahead and give a brief slide uh, about the charge pumps uh, the first one um uh, because uh, these are like a little bit specific to nand flash memory where we generate higher voltages and also uh, not so complex so i thought uh, i'll just give you guys a primer about uh, charge pumps um uh, sorry for this uh, clarity of this slide i just grabbed it from my previous presentation somewhere so okay so let me introduce charge pumps uh, very briefly i don't know how much time i have anybody uh, dritiman uh, we have plenty of time vivek we, uh, we still have half an hour yeah this guy oh i still have half an hour okay <clears throat> okay um okay pro probably i breeze through the slides uh, slides uh, assuming we don't have much time uh, okay anyway so the charge pump uh, <coughs> as uh, um, i don't know if uh, you have heard about this before but charge pumps used in and flash memory are dc dc converters um, which use uh, capacitors to generate high voltage uh, higher voltage than the supply voltage um, basically they use charge conservation principle um, you can actually generate any high voltage by stacking capacitors um, in many ways um, there are many ways to stack the capacitors um, uh, the, the architecture of a charge pump actually depends on the device characteristics and uh, other second order effects uh, such as parasitic capacitance resistors of the switches switch design is also very important uh, to be able to effectively pass the charge um, from the input to the output okay so basically uh, i just wanted to show this uh, one stage simple uh, charge pump uh, which doubles the voltage right so uh, just uh, start uh, this is a pretty busy slide uh, please bear with me um, so you start from the left here um, this is the charging half cycle where uh, in the phase one you you charge the top plate of the capacitor um and uh, connect the bottom plate to the ground the top plate uh, is charged to vdd and then when you kick the bottom plate with a, another vdd the charged uh, the, the top plate uh, is uh, goes to two vdd and that voltage is uh, 
is uh, sent out to the output by closing this switch in phase phi two. So this is this is very simple, right? So a very simple operation. Um, uh, so the challenge is like uh, like how do you how do you uh, implement these switches? One simple way and one very traditional way, uh, famously called Dixon charge pump, is uh, the switches are realized by diodes. Okay, so these are early charge pumps. They use diodes as switches. Um, of course, the bottom plate is uh, driven by a buffered clock. Uh, whether it's zero or one, uh, it will decide here. Uh, this clock will decide. So when um, the disadvantage with the diodes is there is always a threshold voltage drop here, right? So if, uh, for example, assume the uh, top plate was at zero. So if you have a diode and this, the voltage will be VDT minus VT. It won't be VDT. The entire VDT will not be passed. Um, and, uh, and, and in the next phase, when you're kicking the bottom plate with a VTT, it will be two VDT minus VT. And then obviously this diode will be reverse biased. So, uh, so the, this, this won't uh, let the charge flow back in this direction. Uh, uh, and uh, if the output is uh, less than this voltage, this, this uh, diode turns on and then it uh, passes the charge uh, uh, to the output. Uh, so basically the maximum voltage you can obtain by this uh, having a simple diode, here is two VDT minus uh, two VTT, two VT, right? Um, I hope you're following me. I hope I'm not too fast. Uh, uh, please interrupt in case if you're not uh, uh, following or something like that. Um, Okay, so now, uh, uh, so these diodes help in transferring the charge in the single direction, right, from input to output. Um, uh, the major disadvantage is the VT drop. It's not an efficient way to transfer charge. Obviously, you're lo losing some of VT. Uh, so we have uh, uh, these diodes are replaced by switches with boosted gates to achieve uh, uh, the so-called uh, VT cancellation where the VT of the device uh, is no longer a barrier. But the problem with the switches is if you're using an NMOS switch, uh, you need to boost the voltage to a higher voltage. Uh, this is no, pro uh, so to pass a VD, VDD, you need a higher voltage on the gate, VDD plus VT, uh, to pass this voltage completely. Uh, that's, uh, that's okay. Um, but uh, come, come, coming to the output stage, what we have, uh, what we need is the voltage, which is more than which we intended to generate. So if we want to have a two VDD output here, you need some voltage, which is uh, two VDD plus VT. So if we already have that voltage, then there's no point in generating a lower voltage, right? So we don't have this voltage basically. Um, so that's why we need some intelligent methods to generate these uh, two, v, two VDD plus VT to completely pass the charge. So, uh, so I've shown a very simple uh, implementation of the uh, charge pump, um, uh, a doubler stage here, you know, which involves NMOS and PMOS devices um uh, to pass the charge to vdd uh, here so this is uh, divided into two half circuits uh, basically one half circuit is working in one phase while the other half circuit is working in the other phase um it's again a two phase operation here uh, so the one half circuit is helping actually to boost the gates of the uh, other half circuit in this way for example if if this transistor is turned on uh, in, in in one phase assume uh, say in in phi 2 where this is grounded in that case uh, this vdd is passed by this two vdd here um, and and, and uh, in the other phase when you are kicking it with a, with a vdd we have a two vdd here but we have a vdd here so this is this uh, NMOS transistor is turned off and this PMOS transistor turns on, 
because uh, a lower voltage on the gate of PMOS transistor. So 2VDD uh, passes uh, without any uh, drop here. So just to give you an idea like uh, uh, about the basic uh, uh, operation of the pump. Uh, so this is just two VDD. So we need uh, like uh, 10 VDD or 20 VDD to generate very high voltages. As I have told um, before, like uh, there is a floating gate transistor uh, which needs to be programmed. So the program voltages uh, go as, or as high as 30 volts actually. So in that case, um, there are many concerns, there are many reliability aspects that come into the picture. The breakdown voltages of low voltage devices are more uh, sufficient to generate such high voltages. And uh, uh, th this is the case where we are, uh, consider we are not considering any parasitic effects. Actually, there is a bottom plate parasitic for every, um, every capacitor. Uh, which is uh, realized by a, a device um, uh, and also there are parasitic routing uh, top plate parasitics also the reason why i'm like uh, stressing more on these uh, parasitics and everything is basically uh, charge pumps they uh, occupy almost uh, 30 percent of the total uh, analog periphery area and also they consume 30 percent of power so optimizing them is like uh, uh, very important um, for the overall uh, power reduction and overall area reduction. So we kind of uh, continuously innovate to make the charge pumps smaller and smaller and more efficient in terms of current efficiency. Um, yeah, so this gives, I, I guess this has given you a brief, uh, uh, overview of the charge pump cells. Um, yeah, th there is much more than to it. Uh, where you th this, there are a lot of literature available in the IEEE website. Uh, there are many papers. You can uh, go ahead and uh, check those um, to follow. Uh, uh, so this is uh, pretty much about the charge pumps, which I just wanted to introduce for the NAND flash. Um, so Dritiman asked me to put some interview questions also. Um, uh, uh, so uh, so I just uh, will share probably very simple ones. Uh, this is what a typical interview question. I, I guess the audience is mostly uh, um, undergrads in their uh, final uh, final year or something. I guess you will have some idea about the CMOS. Uh, uh, because uh, I've been out of college, at least my undergrad uh, has been a long time. I don't know what are the present standards, but I think you guys now have a good idea about the CMOS, right? So I've, uh, I've quickly, this came to my mind uh, when uh, Dritiman asked me to put some in typical interview questions. So uh, yeah, so he, you have these four, uh, I'll be discussing this question probably. Most of you might be knowing the answer. Uh, so maybe it's a repetition for you, but yeah, bear with me. So basically, uh, this is a depletion device, right? So this is a negative VT device. So I'm asking, yes, okay. So, so, sorry for the interruption, Vivek. Yes. So, so, like, only one quick question, like, so mm -hmm. generally we use uh, boost converters also in DC to DC to, I mean, generally yes. boost. So what yes. is the difference between this uh, charge pumps oh. and Okay, okay, okay. Um, then a good question. May I know who, who asked that? Uh, Nikhil. Oh, Nikhil again. Okay. Uh, um, uh, thanks, Nikhil, for asking the question again. So basically, yeah, so we have uh, buck boost regulators also uh, to generate higher voltages. The problem is they can't be realized uh, on chip because they need uh, inductors. So charge pumps are much more uh, area efficient, but not uh, power efficient. The efficiency of the charge pumps is much lesser when compared to buck boost converters, but they can be integrated into the, uh, integrated into, into a die. So that is the major difference. Um, so they're much cheaper to implement, right? And we are just using uh, on device, uh, the existing device caps or something like that. We don't have, we don't have to put uh, an on-chip inductor or something which like uh, takes huge area 
um so in that way they are much more uh, and uh, like, like to... stacking stacking these capacitors and uh, i mean switching at high speeds don't it cause any ripples or extra noise in the circuit like don't it uh, yeah. get any jitter and extra jitter into the circuit no man will it um, cause any yeah so basically we do have a uh, uh, some regulators with a good psr to reduce the noise the noise is a concern you're right um probably i should have talked a little bit more about the charge pumps uh, uh, but anyway so i um noise is definitely a concern uh we we do we do have regulators um, the charge pump voltages are not directly fed to the word lines uh, to the gates so, so we do have regulators in the path we we do have some custom methods to reduce the noise um uh, there are many methods to do that as well yeah uh, okay thank so, you yeah yeah uh yeah so going back to the interview question um so obviously a depletion device um so i would be happy if the guy who was answering this question first asked me whether i should consider the body effect or not right yeah so uh, it depends the the maximum v uh, the, the the vx voltage uh, to which this can go depends on the body uh, body where the body of this uh, nmos or uh, the pmos is connected because we have body effect which can alter the vt of the device right so uh i'm assuming there's no body effect um so, but i'd be happy if someone asked me whether i should consider it or not because they are trying to and uh, i mean they're trying to take uh, consider all the details right so uh, the maximum it can go given in this is a negative vt is 4 volts right so at that point the vgs becomes negative 1 and if it tries to go more than 1 then vgs will become less than the vt which is minus 1 so the device effectively becomes uh, off um and of course after it is turned on it depends on the capacitor and uh, uh and the leakage in this device uh in, in 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 i mean if you give a really long span of time then it depends on the leakage uh, whether this leaks more or this leaks more Uh, whether it ulti ultimately will go to a 5 volt or uh, 0 volt that's what but my answer is, uh, i'm not expecting that answer so we're just looking at uh, where this voltage will be the vx will be at 4 volts right um so the understanding this this kind of understanding is very important uh, is very basic but it's very important uh, when you're uh, having uh, just now i explained about charge pumps right so we should know like uh, what is limiting the voltage to which it can be boosted up right in the second uh, example i have uh, the gate at 5 volts the same depletion device uh, vt is minus 1 volt so the vx obviously is 5 volts here so the gate is no more the limiting here uh, limiting factor here uh, so all the 5 volts uh, is passed without any problem because the maximum this can go would have been 6 volts uh, if this were not limiting the drain node is not limiting the voltage right and so this is uh, this is it and then we have this scenario where there is a enhancement device with a positive vt so the maximum this voltage can go is 3 volts because uh, uh, if it tries to go over 3 volts then we have a vgs which is less than vt and uh, obviously uh, the device turns off um and coming to the pmos uh, I, i guess it's it is pretty easy like the vx the maximum voltage to which this uh, vx node can go is 5 volts plus we have a vt of 1 volt um 3 volts at the gate which is minus vt is Uh, is is more than the threshold voltage so all the voltage passes here i guess there are no questions um for this uh, simple uh, simple uh, switch um, problem okay 
so the other questions i could typically think of is uh, some kind of uh, capacitor basics rc circuits is uh, what uh, we typically tend to ask uh, in the interviews right um okay so uh, so again if i give this question it's a little bit uh, incomplete it's a little bit incomplete because i have not given any initial conditions right if someone asks me what is the initial condition on vout then i'll be happy okay so the guy is considering um, the initial conditions before he right away jumps into the problem so assume we have a pulse a uh, 100 nanosecond pulse um on this uh, 100 nanosecond pulse of 4 volts uh, uh, on v in and then what would be the v out and uh, so pretty straightforward pretty simple if you just uh, use uh, capacitor division or law of conservation of charge uh, you can pretty much get, get easily get the answer here right so the, the output will look something like this um uh, and it uh, is around 3 volts is the voltage to which it can go <clears throat> pretty simple stuff and uh, okay so i'd ask uh, okay what if we have a resistor um connected to the capacitors how does the <clears throat> it look like uh, how how does the uh, v out look like right uh, so again it's a simple rc problem um uh, so if you look at this the node here it is like a um uh, it is it is simple rc uh, with two capacitors connected in series so you find the equivalent capacitance and uh, the equivalent uh, rc for this will be uh, that one the equivalent capacitance into r that is the time constant so obviously we have like uh, um, uh, sub sub 1 picofarad uh, overall capacitance here when when compared to 100 nanoseconds uh, of uh, pulse width i'm giving here that is pretty much less it's in a few nanoseconds range so it should pretty much uh, uh, <clears throat> quickly go to its final voltage of 3 volts something like that and then uh, it settles at uh, at 3 volts um, going by this uh, the analysis we, what we have already done here and then goes back to zero okay so yeah pretty much simple and uh, i can i can complicate this uh, little more also um, since we don't have whiteboard and everything to discuss but uh, what if there is a resistor here okay what if there is a resistor here so intuitively uh, uh, we have a discharge path on v out right so the voltage uh, um, depending on rc it find uh, first of all it builds builds up and then it kind of uh, let me say i'm great or something kind of uh discharges based on the rc constants uh, there are many ways to solve the problem right but i'm just looking at an intuition basically here uh uh you may have a resistor some resistor okay <clears throat> in that case uh, kind of there is a discharge path to the ground and then uh when you have a negative transition uh, on this input edge of course the voltage goes to the negative and uh, uh, i mean there is there is still an rc here this and then it ultimately goes something like this uh, so yeah uh, these kind of uh, intuition uh, there are many rc questions to uh, you can ask uh, so uh, basic thing is like you need to be little uh, intuitive in trying to explain what actually happens uh, in terms of uh, rc response uh, yeah these are the some questions i could uh, quickly put uh, okay and uh, so i think uh, my presentation ends here um uh, i wish i had more questions to put but uh, given the time sorry um so any questions i'll open up the forum for any questions uh, anything uh, in general regarding the career uh, um i'll be happy to take your questions so yeah, yeah one quick question actually uh, regarding the stacking itself uh, so i missed uh -huh. it over there so like mm -hmm. uh, if we go on stack i um, mean st that's uh, i mean my question is like stacking does it affect the read and write times 
like uh, do it include any i mean latency into the circuit like if we go on stacking does it infer any latency i mean does it the it it makes the device slow like the first horizontal plate will be accessed easily but the last of the plate will be accessed let me later to give you a little more uh, perspective okay i think i need to uh, stop annotating i guess uh, how do i go back uh, maybe yeah you take okay, yeah, 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 share and share yeah. maybe that easier of yeah, yeah 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 okay i think uh, it was nikhil again okay let me go back to this slide okay. oh i just need to clear these annotations right okay just hold on please Uh, oops. Okay, it's clear now. Okay. So the yeah, Nikhil, uh, you had a question about. Uh, okay. Okay. Ah, uh, you had a question about uh, whether the read-write performance will be actually affected in the <clears throat> in the case of three D memories, right? Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, in fact. Uh, in fact uh, basically the 3d technology uh, works on something called charge trap uh, technology uh, it is little bit different from uh, the concept is same the electrons are uh, trapped into the tunnel uh, the concept is the same uh, except that you have thinner gates uh, thinner gates uh, so the uh, the capacitances are little more actually uh the parasitic capacitance of the cell are little more so so you will have to yeah deal with uh, higher capacitances and uh, uh the um uh, so, uh, so even the charge pumps need to be uh, need to consider all the extra loading effects um so definitely um the performance is uh, the performance is uh, in terms of uh, programming and uh, uh, reading it's, it's a little bit slower when compared to the uh, 2d nand um, but basically speaking like uh, uh, we overcome these uh, challenges uh, by imp improvements in the circuits basically so th these are the challenges provided at, at the device level but uh, the we do have faster circuits and uh, um, other other techniques to to overcome those limitations basically uh, thanks Vivek. actually i mean mm -hmm. uh, generally i mean what i studied in my gra mm -hmm. graduation is like we use mm -hmm. sense amplifiers uh, to just amplify the um, difference between bit line and mm -hmm. bit 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 line bar so that the it would improve the fastness of the memory mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, i mean already uh, as you said in the presentation we are using this charge pumps for uh, to get higher vdds so mm -hmm. still now we require i mean sense amplifiers like already i think the charge pump, pumps will provide the enough difference voltage like they are already mm -hmm. at high voltage so okay uh, so basically uh, okay probably i need to go into little bit more details um yeah. uh, well, for a minute i'll just uh, i'll just put a break here nikhil we'll take it if record offline we'll connect to you vivek uh, for the inter yeah. uh, let other folks have couple of queries let's little bit go into sure, the sure. sorry yes yeah, sure. uh, no problem yeah so it's supposed to be let like, like very high level um nikhil yeah you can get in touch with me um there's a lot to it there's a lot to it <laughs> okay so it's not yeah, yeah, sure. um definitely yeah okay, okay. we so, can discuss it yeah yeah so i'll stop the recording here vivek uh, just okay.